All right, Take Charge Thursday, the Jay Delay Show. My doctor, your doctor, I promise you, if you listen to him, he is from the ultimate wellness group, one of the foremost thinkers in terms of medicine in this world. Hey, Allison, how are you, baby? Brother Daryl, boy, it was something else. It went down, didn't it? Um, one of the foremost thinkers in terms of medicine. Today, we're talking men and women, reproductive health, uh, ED, menstrual problem. And I didn't know how, how big a problem ED was, how big a problem women have with their, with their cycle, with their monthly cycle, and, and infertility. So here to talk about it, my doctor, your doctor, our brother, our friend to the show, the medical expert for the Jay Delay Show, Dr. Akili Graham Muhammad. Welcome to the show, Doc. Thank you, sir. How you doing today, bro? Man, come on, man. I do good when I do bad. You know how it is. Come on, Doc. <laughs> That's right. So, Doc, let me let me ask you something. Let's jump right into it because I know your schedule's busy, and thank you. I know you're in between appointments, Doc, and you're crazy busy. Now, when y'all hear this information, I want y'all to know, don't bombard, Doc, but you got to call him. You got to call him. You got to see from a healthy perspective how it can help you. Doc, let's talk men and women reproductive health. Absolutely. Well, it's a um, definitely a growing problem in this country. I believe um, as far as the most popular medication prescribed to uh, as a, a doctor's prescription, uh, currently it is number one is Lipitor, and I believe either second or third is Viagra. Damn. And then when you talk about um, women and their menstrual difficulties, you know, attempting to get pregnant or birth control, that's up in the top five or ten as well. Okay. So we're talking about a a, a problem that is very, very serious, as well as a growing problem, and I would say one that the reason why I wanted to talk about it today is because we have to start considering whether the type of patterns that we're seeing in the health in the United States, whether they are normal patterns of aging, okay. or are they patterns that something is happening that we just are not paying attention to. Mm. And so let's just briefly talk about the genital area of a man and a woman. The first thing that we have to consider is that they both are very highly vascular, meaning that there's a lot of blood flow. Vascular is just a medical term for blood vessels. It is an extremely high area of blood flow. There are a lot of blood vessels in the pelvic area of a man and a woman. And it makes sense because it's such an important area. Sure. Now my question to everybody listening as a thought provoking question is, if you eat food that has bad additives in it, if you smoke a cigarette, if you drink alcohol, if you're smoking marijuana, will the negative substances that you are bringing into your body, will they make it to your genital area? Wow. If there's a lot of blood flow, it would make sense that there should be a lot of whatever we're pulling in the body in. Why? When you break down your food and you start absorbing it, those nutrients, those substances, those mm -hmm. additives, those colorings, whatever it is that's in what you are ingesting, whatever it is that you're inhaling into your lungs sure. is eventually put into the bloodstream and that bloodstream goes everywhere in the body hmm. the areas that have the most blood flow get the most of those substances so i'm asking i'm asking that question because we have this tendency to believe that god makes mistakes when people bear children and children have some type of genetic malformation or children comes out malformed in some way. No, you made the mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. The process of a sperm and an egg meeting is a very scientific and a very perfect reality. And we ruin it or we interrupt it by the things that we do because we don't take in consideration 
that if you're a young person, if you're in a childbearing age and you plan on having children, you don't even consider that what you're smoking, if you're in a club in an environment where there's a lot of smoke, of so many different aromas, you don't know what you're inhaling or the type of foods that you eat. You know, I've been with a friend before who would stop at McDonald's and Taco Bell and Del Taco and places look like that, Wendy's or whatever, to eat food. But when it was time to put his stop at the gas station and put gas in his car, he said, man, I don't put that cheap garbage in my car. Wow. He wanted wow. the most expensive gas <clears throat> at the so-called best gas station. But yet you're stopping at places that have no intention on putting any nutrition in the food, the so-called food that you're eating. No, so back on track, I'm saying that because on an everyday basis, if you have a plan, young women or young men, on having a child, you have to consider how you are taking care of your body every day and whether or not you are producing the right sperm and the right egg to produce a healthy child. Yes, it does start that early. And so when we're talking about erectile dysfunction and we're talking about menstrual abnormalities and we're talking about infertility, whether it's male infertility or female infertility, what it really comes down to is that the egg or the sperm or something in the process of them being able to be moved is not working correctly. Now, what do I mean by that? In men, we know that we have a prostate gland, and it's prostate, not prostrate. And prostrate <laughs> is when you bend down and bow to somebody. Prostate Doc, I, is the Doc organ. I've heard people. I've heard people yeah. say that. I, I man, hear it all the time. Some prostrate I'm, about, I'm about to get under, I'm about to get under the system too, because they say something that ain't, ain't correct either. But the prostate gland yes. is the gland that produces the fluid when we have an ejaculate. When we actually have what we call an orgasm in a man. That fluid that comes out of you is made by the prostate gland because you can't see sperm. The fluid comes from the prostate gland. In a woman, their mucus that will allow the sperm to travel in the right manner is based on her health. When a woman is eating the type of foods that are very toxic to her body, her mucus is sometimes a lot more thick and then it causes a problem with the sperm traveling. So when a person, not a person, when two people are trying to have a baby and they can't, there are many different possibilities of what can cause infertility. It's not always the man's fault. It's not always the woman's fault. Sometimes it's a combination. And sometimes there are many different factors in the whole process that can happen. So, again, we have to include in women the menstrual cycle. And, again, I hear women say things like ministration. Ministration is not what, ha what is happening. Ministration is a process of filtration. Menstruation is what is happening in women. Mental menstruation. menstruation. <laughs> Come God, on now. Thank you. We got to make sure. I, I just, I'm just throwing that out there because I want to make sure when people are talking that they're talking from a point of knowledge and not what they hear other people say. Sure. But sure. let's when we look when we're looking at the menstrual cycle in a woman, that is a very intricate hormonal scientific perfection in order for it to happen correctly. And so when your body is being altered by birth control pills or altered by certain type of um, medications that can alter your menstrual cycle. When a woman is eating certain type of foods that have hormone disruptors, it can alter how your cycle works. So the, the reality is that most of the time, when a woman goes to a typical doctor and asks for something to get my menstrual cycle right, you're going to have somebody give you hormones. That's what I was trained to do. But that is not necessarily always the right thing to do. Sometimes you have to evaluate your habits, evaluate your lifestyle, get you on some type of a program that is consistent, and then your body sometimes will get itself back right just based on that. A lot of times when people are going to sleep at different times and waking up at different times and they sometimes they do things all night and sleep all day, and sometimes they do things all day and sleep all night. 
that throws the body into a whirlwind. The body doesn't like to be confused. The body doesn't like to be thrown in all these different different ways. The body likes to work the same way that every single person that's listening can rely on the sun. Wow. You can rely on the sun coming up almost the same time every morning. Now, it does change a little bit over the year, but the point is it changes so slowly, you can consistently count on it at the same time. It's going to go down about the same time every day. Well, your human body works on that same time frame. The time frame that it takes for this earth to rotate around the sun is the same rhythm that the human body is based on. And when it comes specifically to a woman's cycle, the sun, the, I'm sorry, the earth rotating around the sun, as well as the positioning of the moon in that rotation is what it helps women's cycle maintain its balance. You know, <laughs> so again, like I said, we're talking about some very scientific, <clears throat> intricate perfection. Sure. But sometimes sure. we throw that system off, and that's why we have some problems. Doc, let me ask you a question really quick. Uh, we, yes. got, we got an inbox, and uh, I, I thank you. I thank you, Destiny, for the question. Dr. Akili, I've listened to you since you started on the Jay DeLay Show. I appreciate what you say, your thoughtfulness, the way that you guide us. <coughs> Excuse me. But I have one serious question. As you begin to talk about uh, my our menstrual cycle, and I hope I said it right. Yes, you did, Destiny. You said it right, my love. She wants to know, is it okay for her... Let me just read it. She, doc, Dr. Keeley, I, I really need to know for my health and the health of my future children. The doctor says, for me to regulate my cycle, it's good to have the birth control pills. The birth control pills, they do have side effects, I can feel them, but it does regulate my flow. Ordinarily, I have a super heavy flow, but when I take the birth control pills, it minimizes my flow, and it's allowing me to have a much more manageable cycle. Can you help me with that, please? Well, actually, I think that's a very, very important, a very good question, a very thought-provoked question. <clears throat> and I hope that you would accept that, number one, I've been doing this for a long time, so you're listening to a man who used to do the same thing. I used to put people on birth control pills to regulate their cycle. Mm. But let me point out a couple of points that I've learned over the years. Number one, anytime you take a pill, a shot, a liquid, or anything that is of a synthetic nature, and you take that and it replaces something that your body makes, then the process by which your body makes it starts to atrophy. Atrophy just means lose the potential. Okay. So now the, the parts of your body that make your natural hormones is being replaced, and so it is losing its ability, ability to do it. So what is going to happen when you decide to get off of the birth control, which eventually has to happen? That's the first question. Okay. The second question is, I will not argue that taking a birth control pill can make some changes. So you had heavy cycles, but my question is, what was the cause of your heavy cycles? What was causing your body to release tissue from your uterus that it was deeming wasn't necessary anymore? Something was causing that to happen. Because when a woman has heavy menstrual cycles, that is an indicator that the inside of your uterus, the tissue that grows every month and that is released when you don't get pregnant, that is a cleansing process. Why was your body cleansing in such a heavy manner? And then when you take this pill, why does that cleansing process not, not become as heavy? What is the difference? See, that, that is something that needs to be evaluated. When you take a pill and there's some changes, that should produce some questions. Why did this happen? How long did it take? 
what is the effect that's happening? What is, why is my body bleeding less now than it was when I wasn't on this? Why was my, my body bleeding more when I was following my natural hormones? What is normal? Am I considered normal now that I'm on the pill? Or was I normal before when I was bleeding heavier? Where did I get this statement from that I was bleeding heavier? What was I using as my measuring tool? Wow. Was I measuring myself against somebody else? Or did, did I evaluate what changed in me from the time I started my period until this evaluation and this doctor putting me on birth control pills? So to be honest with the sister, I would have to work with her to really get to the answer. But I'm asking these questions because these are the type of questions we should ask when somebody comes to us to give us something that supposedly is going to fix the problem. Well, if it's supposed to pick, fix the problem, how long do I have to take this birth control pill? When will I be able to get off of this birth control pill? When will I be able to allow my body to go back to its natural way of producing a cycle and a monthly cleansing process? And then at what point can I decide that I want to start having a child because I can't have a child if I'm on a birth control pill? And then while I'm taking this birth control pill, since studies have said that sometimes these hormones can accumulate in our fatty tissue and take years to get out. If I decide that I want to have a child, how long do I have to get off of this pill before I can get pregnant? Wow. Will I be able to get off of this pill and will my cycle start continuing right after the pill? Will it continue normal? Will it continue the same way as I off this pill? Or will I have to go through an adjustment period where my body has to start redoing everything by itself? Will I start having heavy periods again? Will I be able to get pregnant? How long will it take before I will be able to get pregnant? So there's so many possibilities. And I hope I answered the sister's question because sometimes there really isn't an exact answer until you start making some changes and evaluating what those changes do. Absolutely. So, incredible, absolutely incredible, Doc. This is the Jay Delay Show. It's Take Charge Thursday. We're taking charge of our health. And, Doc, I, I did get the message. The interns just told me, um, I know you have a patient, but, Doc, I, I want to know, is it a possibility that, Doc, you can come on tomorrow and we can talk about the other side? Because I've got inboxes from men that have suffered with ED and men and men that say that, even uh, William, William, for instance, William says when he ejaculates, nothing comes out. No liquid, no semen, nothing comes out. And he wants to know what he can do and, and if you could possibly help him. He said he's tried some of everything. Can you, do, do you, can you squeeze us in between appointments tomorrow, same time during the show, Doc? Uh, you kind of broke up a little bit. Say the last part. Did I? Can I what? Can you? Can you? Can you be with us on tomorrow, same time, Doc? Because we want to try to help more people. I know you've got to 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 go. You have a patient now, but Doc, can you come on tomorrow with us? I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I, I believe uh, I don't have my schedule right in front of me, so I believe I'll be open tomorrow. But. Uh... I'll do my best to do that. We're talking about 11.30 again? Uh, yes, sir. Right, right at 11.30, between 11.30 and 12, if, if, we, if we can just talk about it um, with women. You want to hear this because we're going to talk about ED in men and, and, and help, help men and help women, too, in this situation. This is the, one of the greatest minds and greatest gifts that we have in Dr. Achilles. He's a very humble man. Um, you two can get an appointment and doc, go ahead and give them the phone number that they can call your office and go ahead and, and, and get their appointment today. Yes, sir. The telephone number that you can call is 832-429-4576. Again, 832-429-4576. And you can also visit the ultimate wellness group.com for more information. All right, Doc, I, I tell you what, I thank you so much. Um, even even squeezing us in, Doc. We we appreciate the love, Doc. Just squeezing us in. And I know you gotta go handle appointments. Man, I'm trying I'm telling you, Yolanda has done it. I have done it. If you've never ever 
had a chance to visit with Dr. Akili, again, go to theultimatewellnessgroup.com, theultimatewellnessgroup.com, or you can call him again, 832-429-4576. Doc, thank you, and we look forward to talking to you more tomorrow. It'll give us a chance. T. Farrell, tell all the boys that are affected by it, that, that, that have been affected. I'm going to tell my friends and tell people about ED. Sisters, you tell the other sisters. Dr. Akili is going to talk to us tomorrow and share with us some things that we can do to get our lives back.